Well, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to another day, another beautiful day that the Lord God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let's uh, let's go to prayer and then we'll get into part two on faith to raise the dead. Lord God in heaven, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for warm beds to sleep in. Thank you for food on our tables. Thank you for transportation to get where we need to go. Thank you for brothers and sisters that love us and watch out for us and pray for us. Thank you for the coming togetherness of the brothers and sisters that we can learn to love each other and work together, and move forward in what it is that you have for your body in this day, in this hour. Satan, listen up. You have no place in this. You have no place in the message. You have no place in the tools used to send or receive the message. Back off. In the name of Yeshua, I release the Holy Spirit to come over us, to protect us, and to guide us in all truth. All this I pray in the holy and precious name of Yeshua. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as I said, faith to raise the dead, this is the second part. And last week we went through three scriptures that said, the just shall live by faith. And the last one we read basically what it means right uh the just one who has been justified by the blood of yeshua okay or or more literally to be made or declared righteous these people should what live by faith right be living in faith <laughs> and that's the reason the lesson in the faith realm is so important because it's a step-by-step process and i probably cannot emphasize that enough okay it's a step by step process it's not something that you wake up tomorrow and you got all the faith in the world okay and you'll hear me reiterate that over and over because it's very important that everybody understands it's a step by step process <clears throat> uh think about it like this you know when you went to school you were young you go to kindergarten you go to grade one you go to grade two when it comes to becoming a Christian, you think as soon as you, you know, got Yeshua and got filled with the Holy Ghost that you just graduated to university level. That's not the case. No, we start at the beginning and you grow. Okay, you learn, you grow, you go through the processes. So faith is the same thing as, you know, that picture of, of growing up through school. I know we look in the mirror, right? We see, you know, in my case, I got some gray hair in the beard. You, you look in the mirror, that's what you see. And so we think we're all grown up. We think that, you know, well, I've been to college or I've been to university or whatever. So, so we must have passed everything and we must have be at a point of uh, a great degree in theology now, right? And that's not the way it works. It works a step at a time, a day at a time. It has to be a way of life that we have to apply every day, all right? And now here's what we suggest with it, all right? Take something in your life that you know you've been seeking God for. You've been seeking God for something to change. All right. Could be something of deliverance, could be something of healing, could have to do with your finances. Right. Could be, I mean, a lot of things. Pick that one thing. Pick one thing. Okay. Don't try to pick everything in your life at the same time. Pick one thing. All right. Because if you try to pick too many, you know, you go out there, well, I got this, 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 and this. I'll just, I'll just take care of them all. You're going to end up very frustrated. All right, so, so take that one thing and begin to speak to it. Begin to speak to it. Begin to demand that it come under the authority. All right, and then go into the work. Now, if you don't have one, we, we, we recommend, you know, getting a strong concordance, all right, so that you can go through that to find the scriptures related to whatever it is you're dealing with. All right, so you look up the word and it will tell you all the scriptures that have that word in it. You can go to those scriptures. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on the internet. But yeah, it's good to have the book if you can get it. Right? <clears throat> write those scriptures down. Okay? Take all those scriptures that apply to whatever you're working on and write them down. Put them on the mirror in the bathroom. All right? If you, if, you know, you got a place to, to see them while you're, while you're sitting on the pot there, uh, put them there. Put them on the dash of your car. Put them on the bedroom wall where you sleep. And constantly become obsessed, okay? Become obsessed with God's word 
in relationship to whatever it is, whatever the problem is. Okay. And, and that's, that's the way we recommend dealing with it. Right. Um, if, if you beat one mountain, see, this is the exciting part about faith, right? We, we need to get excited about our faith. So we need to see success. If you would beat one mountain, just one in your life, you'll beat them all until you beat one. You're not going to beat any of them. All right. You have to beat one. And in order to do that, you're, you're going to have to have bulldog tenacity. All right. You're going to have to latch on and not let go, not let go, no matter what. All right. And if you're willing to do that, all right, if you're willing to do that, you'll be all right. If you're not, then you're going to lose. All right. Faith is a game of life and death. All right. I don't like the word game. It's not really a game, but it's about life and death. All right. Your faith will either heal you or your lack of faith, doubt and unbelief, will kill you, right? Now you get to decide that, that's the good, that's the good news. Um, so what's the anointing all about then? Well, the anointing is, is to help stimulate your faith, okay? It's to help stimulate your faith. Um, excuse me. It's, you know, you see stories, you, you hear of um, preachers, that have an anointing of God where they can lay hands on somebody, somebody gets healed, right? Um, what that person is doing is, is they're exercising the anointing that God has put into their lives, right? And then whatever it is that the person that's in need, they're healed, they're set free, they've been given miracles. That the, the point of that is for that person, for their faith level to come up, all right? So that they can know the person you know receiving so that they can know that it can be done all right so that they can know that it can be done so that they can start living it in their lives that that's the hope it's not that we have somebody to go to that can lay hands on us it's so that they can know it's real and so they can begin to apply it in their lives and they can implement it and on and on and on and on right and, and that's that's a beautiful exciting thing but you see People want to just go to somebody else, all right? They just want to receive from somebody, somebody that went through it, brought themselves to a place where they can, they can do that. And the thing of it is, it, it becomes a, how do, you, how do you put that? It becomes too easy, right? I'll just run and get what I need. I'll just run and get what I need. And we're not saying, you know, if you need, you know, prayer, laying, yeah, go, go get it, absolutely. But the problem is, it becoming that that kind of a crutch, right? Where we let that person fast, let that person pray, let that person develop their relationship with God, and we'll just go to them when we have a problem. And then you don't guard the anointing in your own life. You don't take care of it because you haven't built it. It's just an easy way to, to run to somebody else that it's working in their life. But you see, if you have to pay the price, if you have to become that, you're fasting, you're praying, you're interceding, you're going to take care of that, all right? You're going to take care of it in your whole life. You're going to protect it. And then this, so the same, same thing happens with the anointing. As long as you can draw from someone else, you know, you got it made, right? The problem is that we are required to grow up. We need to grow up. Now, how do you eat an elephant? Because, right, because right now we're looking at an elephant, this, this idea that we can grow into what we see in somebody else. How do you do that? one bite at a time, right? One step at a time. <laughs> and that's the way faith works. So don't get discouraged. All right. So you take that, you take that mountain in your life. All right. We use the elephant, the, the mountain, same thing, big, large obstacles in your life. All right. You begin to write those scriptures down. You begin to memorize the scriptures, right? Now, if you, if you can't get them memorized yet, you know, if they're not there, ready to go, read them, open up the book and read them right out of the book. Right, you got them there. You can see them when you're in the bathroom. You're reading them. You're brushing your teeth. Okay, so I can't, I can't speak it out loud when I'm brushing my teeth because I got my toothbrush. Okay, that's fine. But when you can, you need to speak them out loud. All right, you need to speak them out loud, and the reason is because faith comes by hearing. All right, faith comes by hearing. All right, and hearing by the word of God. 
So the more that you hear yourself speak that, the more you're going to have confidence in what you're saying or speaking, right? So a man thinks in his heart, so is he, right? So we're trying, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build into a place of that transferal from speaking, right? And hearing where it gets into your heart so that that's who you'll be. So that that's who you, you will be in. And you, you can literally change the destiny of you or anybody that's listening to you by that concept, all right? By what we just said there, well, speaking it, hearing it, getting it into the heart, all right? <clears throat> if you will hear it, you'll, you'll you know, begin to speak it so you can hear it, so you can get it into your heart. Eventually, you'll get there. Keep working on it. Keep working on it, right? Well, you know, Brother Todd, my... I'm going to be poor. My folks were poor. I mean, well, what are you doing with that statement? You're, you're speaking, you're hearing, it gets into your heart. And guess what? If that's what you're speaking, 99% of, of those people that speak like that are going to be poor. All right. You see, it's, and that's a spirit. That's a spirit. And those, those spirits are predominant within certain parts of our population. Right. But those things can be broken. And that's the whole, they can be broken. You can be a successful or you can be a failure. It's your choice. It's your choice. I love that word choice, right? God made you successful, right? The powers of darkness are out here. What are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to do, according to John 10.10, 10, it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right, so that's the devil's job. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. And it goes on to say, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. All right. And within the process of the more abundantly, you find yourself understanding who God really is and, and what this thing is really all about. So, you know, if you have to fend for yourself, you're going to bring your faith up a notch. Right. And then you're going to bring your faith up a notch. You're going to keep going. You're going to you're going to find success within it and you're going to move forward. If you're going to a, a church or a synagogue and you're basing everything that you're doing off of the vessel up front, okay, relying on them and their anointing, um, you're not going to make it very far. All right. It, you can use that for a time. God will let you use that for a time. All right. But only as far as he's going to let it go. All right. <laughs> now, where does faith have to start? All right. Where do you start working in faith? It's got to start in you and your family. That's where it starts. And then you're going to have to find another piece of scripture because, you, you know, when you get so far with that, here you'll be laying hands on your wife, your children, and all of a sudden nothing's going to happen. I'm talking about after something has happened, right? And what's that about, all about? Well, it, we talked about it earlier, you know, oh, look what I can do with my family. Look what I can do with my family. I can pray with it, right? That's so that's going to work, but that's building you up. That's the, that's a step in the process. That's what it is. It's a step in the process. All right. We, we're fortunate enough to have learned under someone that, you know, has been there, was able to pass down the information, and, and we can learn from it and grow from it, right? But you have to understand within it all, it's God. It's not you, right? We get, we get so hung up on the me, myself, and I, and what I can and can't do. It's not you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. And the lessons within it are honestly heart-wrenching. But we have to leave the pride out. Oh, look what I can do with me and my family. We have to leave that part out. We have to know it's only him. And what's our part within it? Just, just believe. Just believe. That's the only part that we play. It's not about how scriptural you are. It's about if you will just believe. All right. So Mark 9, the 23rd verse, just a, a one, one verser here. Jesus said unto them, unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All right. All things are. It says all things are. So the road of faith is rocky at best. All right, it will cause you to stumble. Sometimes you will fall. You get up, you wipe yourself off, 
and you do it again. All right. And 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 the the important the importance of this message is, you know, if you haven't been through it, uh, you know, you, you will get through it. it. It's part of the process. All right. Stumbling, falling down, getting back up, wiping yourself off, and continuing on. It, it, it's part of the understanding that it's not a game. All right. So that you can brag on yourself. That's not what it's about. This is life and this is death. You choose. There was a, you know, a pastor that did a message of faith and he said, any, you know, anyone who wants to live, live by faith, just come on forward and we're going to lay hands on you and, and you're going to have all faith. Right. And the fellow that was, uh, you know, well, I was my mentor was telling the story. He said he was the first one in line. All right. You know, he sat on the front row and that, you know, pastor wouldn't get anything out of his mouth where he wasn't up there first. He wanted to, he wanted whatever was going on. Right. He didn't care what he, what it was. He needed it. He was there. That's the way he, he looked at it. And so he's, he's there and he's like, all right, I'm going to go up and get faith. I'm going to go up and receive faith. He said, he never knew anything about faith at that point. But after this guy preached this message, it looked as though his life was going to hell in a bobsled. That's the way he put it. All right. Things begin to turn upside down. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know how to stop it. He called the pastor. The pastor didn't have any, any answers. And what he came to find out is that that pastor had gotten that message out of, out of a, a Kenneth Hagin magazine. He didn't live it. He didn't understand anything about it. And that's, that's the problem, right? <laughs> That's the problem. They couldn't teach it. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't have any answers, right? So if, if you hear what I'm saying, they, they didn't live it themselves. They couldn't teach it. <clears throat> but he said he found one thing out. You better be careful what you ask for, right? You better be careful what you ask for. Uh, you know, you, you can ask for self-control, find yourself out of out of control, hmm? right? We got We got to go through things we got to learn the processes step by step so every time you take a step you need to understand right uh, the devil it may seem like the devil's coming at you right and, and he's going to try and steal from you what it is that you just received what it is that you just learned because if he can steal it from you then what's good what's what what do we normally do if we try something and it fails we often take a step back right well it didn't work it didn't work so I'm not, I'm not going down that road again. And then that means the devil won in that situation, right? Your faith is important to you and your faith is important to God. All right. Can you believe up into the time? All right. So now we're talking about a hard situation. It's getting, you know, it's looking very bleak. Can you believe up into the time? Whether I live or I die, I belong to him. So in all essence, if I die in the situation, I would have been healed anyway because I went to heaven. Huh? That's faith. Excuse me, that, that will move the hand of God anytime you apply that kind of faith. Because after all, folks, we belong to him. Belong to God. There, there, you know, there's nobody listening today that, that you know, knows their destiny as far as the time of, of, of the amount of time they have on earth. Okay, nobody knows the, the amount of time that they have here on earth, but God does. All right, God does. So let's let God be God. Okay, let's let God be God. If, it, if it's my time to go, then, then praise God. Huh? <laughs> You're going to be terribly glad when I get over there, right? But, but no, we're trying to hang on. We're trying to hang on. Life isn't here. All right, and I'm not telling everybody to jump out of the bodies here. I'm saying when it comes great all right when that time comes great until then i have a responsibility to be here and do what needs to be done here but life isn't here uh, all right faith without it you can't please them with it you can raise the dead all right when the disciples came to christ they made the statement that they made you know what 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 must we do that we might work the works of god that's what they asked him. Here they are standing with Yeshua, right? Son of God. They knew that they had not yet arrived to where they could work the works and, and they watched him do it. 
And they wanted to know what they had to do to be able to do it. They didn't say, oh, oh, we can do it. They said, what must we do that we might work the works of God? So, so that's the attitude they had. But the attitude the church has is, I think the people of the church, well, the church owes you the anointing, right? They owe that to you. The church owes you healing. The church owes you financial blessings and prayer for you. The church owes you this. The church owes you that. God doesn't owe you anything, right? He gave it all to you and me. <clears throat> the key is to get around ministry that's lived it so they can teach it, so that you can do it in your own life, all right? Tapes won't do it. CDs won't do it. Books won't do it. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke, the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. When you can get under the manifestation of the anointing, your life will change. The more that you can get under it, get under it. Because God will keep destroying the yoke, changing things in your life. And, and then to the point where you will come to the place where you can do what you need to do. All right? Don't let the devil steal from you because you have some idea that's going to take you off in a different direction. All right? Don't let pride get to you. You know, that's the warning that comes with the success of faith. Don't let pride get, get in the middle of it. All right. Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. All right. So now, now we're getting to the place where this, this requirement to live by faith goes even further. It goes even further than, than what we talked about before. Now the requirement and understanding is that he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So, so if you're not going to live by faith, God's soul will have no pleasure in him. Now, does that mean, you know, if you're, if you're just going to let somebody else and the anointing in their life through the laying on of hands and prayer for you, if you're just going to let everybody else do it, right? And think, thinking that that's going to take care of everything, then God says, I have no pleasure in that person right so again what i want to ask well why would god let you receive from somebody that has that anointing in their life why would why would this the reason that god allows that is you are needed by god to fulfill the destinies that you have on this earth you're, you're needed by god and it, and it you know it greatly bothers the church to hear about predestination but you are predestined from the foundations of this world to fulfill. That's the reason some people go through life. They, they can't seem to stay at this job or that job. They jump from here, there, everywhere. Why? Because the spirit's being moved and not satisfied. And, uh, you know, and isn't it something when you finally get to the right place, right? So, some, some of us could never find the right church in. And, and then, you know, we jump from this one, that one. All of a sudden we heard, Ephraim, come home. And there was a, a settling in the hearts and the spirits. What happened? We found our destiny. We found what it is that God wanted us to have. Now, you want to be careful with that. You want to protect it because the powers of darkness, again, it's a, it's, it's a stepping point. So powers of darkness, again, are going to come. and They're going to try to steal that from you, right? Everything that God does of it, the backside of it, is the devil is going to try and steal it. That's his job, all right? So he goes before god he says look <clears throat> god wants to believe in faith huh god let that hedge down let me in there and i'll show you what todd believes about faith right and god says well I'll, you know i'll let i'll let it down i mean he said he believed in it so he lets it down here comes the devil right and that's that's the way it works you know i'm, I'm sorry that we can't just volunteer and it all have it all works tomorrow exactly the way you know we, we imagine it right <laughs> i mean if, if it could happen that easy we just change the world overnight right boom done no it's a battle it's a battle and that's the reason we're going to get into some big time spiritual warfare right we got people we got intercessors right we need to kick this thing up a notch right and we will get that done understand what he's saying here he has no pleasure in those. So, so as long as we're going to allow our five senses to govern us, right? Constantly uh, never being able to walk by faith. And if you don't walk by faith, then what? Then you're not going to receive the benefits associated with God's lifestyle. You're not going to be able to receive that, right? 
Look at it like this, an employer pays for services, all right? So does God, only it doesn't necessarily come in dollars and cents, all right? It comes in blessings, which could be dollars and cents, can be a whole lot more when you understand blessings. Hebrews eleven twenty four 24 says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. All right. Now, wouldn't it have been easier for Moses just to live in the palace and, you know, receive from the king and whatever? It would have been much easier to do that because he had it made, but he chose not to. All right. Receiving is contingent upon believing. All right. He was not going to believe in any way, shape or form that that was his destiny. Faith starts with the small things and grows. And there's different levels of faith, all right? And, and it's important for everyone to understand that. Uh, we'll, give you, we'll give you some scripture here. And you can, you can add on to that, right? Uh, if you want. But we need to realize within it, we don't start in the upper level of faith, all right? Everybody starts at the bottom. And then there's different levels as we grow, okay? So people are in different places. As you obtain through the levels, through trials and tribulations, right? Purpose of temptation, then you will have moved up. You may wanna you know, ask at this point, well, Todd, how, how many levels are there? <laughs> Until you get to heaven. Until you get to heaven. Faith never quits growing. And when you become complacent, many of us do, that's the reason we're told, you know, we should, we should take time once a year where we can really get off with God, right? You just go off and spend time with God, fast, pray, and find out where your faith level is this year compared to last year. Make sure you understand, has it, has it grown, right? Because it has to grow every year. But unfortunately, some of us get lazy. Sometimes circumstances come and, and we, you know, cause all kind of whatever. All right. So we're going to go through some scriptures talking about faith that brings results. Faith that brings results. So if you'll turn to Matthew 8, 5. <clears throat> Matthew 8, 5 says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a certain centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come as under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And do another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said unto them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Right? And, and of course, we know that his servant was healed in that self-same effort. And, and that's faith that brought the result. Right? Matthew 9, 27 And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. And when he was come into the house, the, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. A lot of people don't understand that. You know, couldn't he have just done it? Of course he could have he, he's God but he said according to your faith according to your faith now if you're going to have to do something according to your faith you know you you're going to want to have as much faith as you can right to, you want to build that up to wherever you can so it can be according to your faith that's what that's all about all right then touched either eyes and said according to your faith be it unto you and their eyes were open and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. But it was according to their faith. Luke 7, 36. Luke 
But one of the Pharisees desired that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with her hair, the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now, when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. I have to find my cursor here. Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. He says, Master, say, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered, I suppose he that to whom he forgave most. And he said in him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, see thou this woman. I entered into thy house and thou gave no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I, is, uh, I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Wow, so... So faith is, is, is a strong, strong thing, right? Now, she shouldn't even have been there, but God did what he did, right? Uh, now, that is faith that brought results. Those three uh, or four sets of scriptures, that's faith that brought results. Now, we're going to go through some that deal with the lack of faith, all right? The lack of faith is the next one. So we're going to talk here for a few minutes about that. Faith obviously brought some, some great results that we, we just went through. Matthew 6, 24. We're going to start with this one. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say, and you take no thought for your life, what, she, what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they harp or gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little faith? So, so the Lord was quick to point out that they were of little faith, right? And, uh, you know, have I ever been into... You know, oh, ye of little faith, yeah, more, more than I want to talk about. But again, it's a process of growing, and, and you need to remember that. Like I said, I'm going to keep pushing that. It's a process of growing, step at a time, right? Three strikes, you're not out. The biggest hindrance, you know, is, is actually us deciding it's, it's not working for us, so we give up. Okay, that's the biggest hindrance. Well, I tried it, it didn't work, I give up. No, keep working at it, it will work. All right, you just got some 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 learning, some learning to do, right? We all got more learning to do. Matthew 21, 17. And he left him and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he hungered. 
And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Right? He's saying, don't lack faith here. Just pray, believe, receive. That's strength. Right? You might say, well, <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, I can't talk to a mountain and literally, it'd be, it's what he's talking about. That's what he said. Now, you can say the mountains of my life, and that'll work, all right? That'll work, but, but literally, right? What's that about? It's about faith. It's about the anointing, but it's about faith, all right? And both of those have to come to the kinds of levels they need to come to. Matt, Mark uh, 435. Mark 435. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him saying unto him master carest thou not that we perish so they're you know looks like the ship's going down right and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why is it that you have no faith? Now, was it, was it their faith? Was he talking about their faith in the situation? Or was he talking about their faith in him? Well, it was their faith in him. The son of God was in the boat. He's in the boat with him. Was he upset? No. Why wasn't he upset? Because he knew they were going to the other side. He knew that, he, right? And if he knew they're going to the other side, guess what? The boat ain't sinking. It's not going to happen, right? And when you, when you begin <laughs> to examine the level, the depth, right? He is faith. He is faith. And when he said, let there be light, there was light. Can you imagine that? Let there be light. There was light, right? And, you know, it's, it's, you know, scary to think that this generation, this, this is the generation that's going to turn this world upside down because of faith. We're going to exercise such a faith to our neighbors. You see, they're going to call you a lot of things, but believe me, when things start to, you know, uh, get to where it's going to get to, they're going to call you. Because you're going to be the ones that they know that will stand up in the time of persecution, Right. All this thing of, you know, being called a cult, right? They're watching it. They're half of them probably out there pointing the fingers, right? You've left Jesus. You're going to hell. Well, you know what? They're going to call. Because you're going to be the only ones that they know that stand staunch enough in your belief to be able to help them. And you will. God knows you will. Now, that, that was lack of faith, right? In each case, faith was what? Faith was the key. It always is. We have to develop our faith ability, and that's probably good for you to write down. We have to develop our faith ability. As we said before, you know, if it, has, if it happens to be money problems, you don't begin with thinking about winning the lottery, all right? <laughs> you got to begin with pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, dollar bills. If God was going to bail us out of every problem, you know, you know where we'd be? We'd be out here trying to write a book, all right? We'd all get proud and think that we did something on our own, and we'd be out here trying to write a book, all right? Well, I know what miracles are all about. Uh, eventually, we will get into the giftings, right? It's absolutely imperative that we work the works. Without the works, you know what? We're, we're nothing more than just a bunch of hot air without it. We can stand. We can talk about God doing all these things all we want, but if there's not evidence that God does something, then it's nothing more than hot air, 
right? Just shooting your mouth off about something that you may or may not know. Unfortunately, you know, we, we have through the years had a lot of flim flammers trying to teach things, selling people a lot of stuff that wasn't truth. Second Thessalonians 3.10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Uh-oh, no, 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 I'm start getting nervous here, right? <laughs> it's that if you weren't going to work, you weren't going to eat. For, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Now. Okay, I'm going to take it out of context. All right, you understand, but you you know that you understand you have to work, right? Without working, faith isn't going to come. All right. Here, if you didn't work, you didn't eat. We, you know, there was a, a, a comedy shows, right? And they would have like this scenario where the guys uh, doesn't look mentally capable to. Uh, <laughs> of even sweeping the sidewalk in front of Walmart. And the joke is the wife would say, you know, oh, he's holding out for an executive position. <laughs> you know, right? he's overqualified, right? No. By faith, you have to work it, exercise it. You need to find a faith project every day. Okay, find a faith project every day. And that's what we want to get instilled before, we, before I finish up today. We want to get that instilled in, in everybody listening. All right, you have to find a faith project every day. You know, what am I going to do today? What's my faith project going to be today? Where we want to get to with it is you, you need to know how the devil is going to act after a while. After, after you get the devil under control, right? And then that's what's ultimately going to happen, right? And he and his buddies are, are going to say, you know what? Um, we're not getting anywhere with this person anymore. Let's go down the street. Let's go find someone else to pick on. You know, we're not getting anywhere with this person anymore. The problem for the devil is that after you and I get this figured out, we're going to be going down the street somewhere, right? And we're going to teach somebody else how to work it and ultimately get it into as many vessels as, as we can. Why? So that we can begin to produce the things of God where people can once again look to and realize, you know, the fullness and the full dimension that you and I are. Okay, we are his, created by him. And yet today, you know, you, you, you decide to go to church Sunday morning, you look around and you see all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 sitting there next to you, right? There's something wrong with that. And what's wrong with it is for too long, people have been sold a bag of Bronx, right? So now, now it's, got, it's got to be gone back and corrected. It's not going to be easy but it's not impossible. Let's go to prayer. <clears throat> Lord God in heaven, you never stop teaching. You never stop growing us. You never stop reaching your hand out for us. And yet it's all done. You've already completed it. It's already paved. It's the, the door's wide open for us to just listen to you as you speak to us through your word in our lives day to day. I thank you for continually bringing us realizations, helping us to understand where we failed. Lord God, encourage all who listen to this, that when the time comes where they fall and scrape their knee, that they'll get up and not give up and move forward knowing that there's, it's not over. We don't have to stand there and cry. We don't have to back off because it didn't work. We need to keep pushing. And I thank you for that encouragement. Let it be instilled into our hearts. Let it be fastened there and, and let us not let go of it. I thank you in the name of your Holy Son, Yeshua. Amen. Well, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Shalom. <laughs>